Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome back to Siege Play Channel. My name is Brooke, and today I'm gonna tell you all about how I turned my brand new backyard into a big garden oasis in 48 hours. So if you're returning, welcome. I know this has been highly anticipated, highly awaited to see my new backyard garden. And trust me, I've been wanting to show you desperately, except I lost my camera charger in the move and I just found it yesterday. <laughs> so if you're new here, then welcome. Uh, we talk all things urban and suburban gardening here and I am on a journey of building my brand new backyard garden oasis after apartment gardening, balcony gardening, I had a community garden plot, and we bought a house. And uh, now I have this big, massive garden. So let me show you the garden first, and then I'm going to put chapters down below to talk about how we designed it, uh, materials, the actual build process, the soil selection, all the nitty gritty good stuff. So grab a beverage, grab a snack, because we gonna be here for a little bit. Okay, and I would like to say too, if you are new here, um, there's like 101 ways to do gardening. This is just the way that I've chosen to go about it. And uh, honestly, who knows, my strategy could change sometime soon. So I posted a vlog um, that actually chronicled our house buying journey. And you know, please go ask questions, but also be respectful of the fact that, you know, I may choose to not divulge some things, but let's look at the garden. So here's kind of the whole entire view from the side yard. Now there's a lot of projects we're still gonna do, but to kind of just actually look at the gardens, this garden bed was already here when we bought the house. So it's put together with these massive bolts and it, it had these hoops on it that go in here. It was actually very well built and the soil that was in this bed was really, really good. And so then we chose to do two four by eights right here. This is a four by 16, we did two four by eights. And then this bed is really interesting because we actually designed it so that you could see it from the kitchen and dining room windows. So this bed is actually perfectly centered into those windows. And that was actually a really important suggestion for my fiance in the design process because he wanted me while I was in the kitchen cooking because that's one of my biggest gardening inspirations is being in the kitchen cooking. He wanted me to be able to look out and see a garden. So that is actually where I planted all of my heirloom tomatoes, which we will do a garden tour um, here at the end of this so I can kind of tell you where everything is. Um, but that was really important to him and I didn't realize it was really important to me. That's one of the interesting parts about the design process process was actually thinking about aesthetic. This bed, we move over to these three four by eights and then we literally just installed this arch today. Um, so this is where I'll grow a lot of my cucumbers, melons, beans, sugar snap peas, all that good stuff. And then as we come around this side yard, this is actually where our little orchard's gonna be. So this backyard is like deceivingly huge. Um, so I already have a couple things planted, but truthfully I'm waiting for the rain this week to soften up the ground so that I can get the rest of these planted. So that is a very quick kind of walkthrough of <laughs> kind of the layout. Um, so let me talk to you a little bit about materials, the process, soil. It's gonna be a long conversation. <laughs> okay y'all, so when we chose this house and when we chose this lot, we really focused a lot on having as much space as possible. One thing that I kind of realized throughout the process is even if the lot size is not as big as you think you want, where the house is positioned on the lot is actually really important. So our house is positioned way more towards the front of the lot, making this space massive. We're also on a corner lot, um, which also really helped. In regards to materials to actually build the beds, I did decide to do pressure treated wood. Now you will find some information on the internet about pressure treated wood and how it's not good for gardens. Um, they used to pressure treat wood back in the day with like arsenic. Um, probably not the best, but they don't do that anymore. And there's plenty of studies out there about how um, the chemicals that they use to pressure treat the wood, um, the amount that makes it into your food is extremely, like not even detectable within a blood test. Um, so I've done my research and I feel really comfortable using this product. Um, everybody's gonna feel different about that. So we used um, three eight foot boards. 
Um, they're six inches in width and they're just about a half an inch thick. I didn't want anything really crazy um, because I've gone that route before and I just find that it breaks apart a lot easier. So I wanted something a bit thinner, but more delicate looking. Um, so we used three boards per bed um, and we used deck screws to screw it all together. Um, and we used some braces in the corners as well. So that was the building process. Um, really not too hard. I'm not like a DIY building channel, so I'm not, I'm not gonna take you through all the dirty details. And actually, I'll pop up some pictures and videos of the whole process. Um, it was actually really special, the building process, because my friends came out, it was my birthday, uh, my mom came, and everybody really like jumped in to help with this garden build. So in terms of materials, that was the wood material that I decided to use. Now let's talk about the building process that I feel like maybe slightly controversial, but maybe not. Maybe I'm blowing it up in my brain. So I am in general a no-till gardener. Now what that means, no till, no dig, that means you layer the soil with compost and mulch and really good nutritious stuff and you don't actually disturb the soil life. So here in Central Texas, Zone 8B, we have extremely heavy clay soil. Um, that's just the reality of where I live and that's what I choose. So in that really heavy clay soil, it takes a long time to establish a really healthy no-dig bed. Um, when I did it at my rental house, it took about six months before it really took off and became a really successful garden bed. Um, because when you do no dig, what you do is you lay down cardboard and then you lay down compost, you lay down mulch. Um, and over time, the cardboard actually like totally disintegrates and it all kind of by osmosis becomes this beautiful, wonderful microbiological situation. However, <laughs> The option that I did not have this go around was time. So I had to speed up that process myself and I did that with a tiller. So I am doing till once and never till again. There have been a lot of popular gardeners who do this and they're very successful. So I tilled with a tilling machine that I rented on Home Depot or at Home Depot. I did it online at Home Depot. We picked it up and um, it really wasn't hard to use. It was, it, it, it'll jerk you forward. Like you gotta kinda know what you're doing. Um, so if you're not like the strongest person in the world, I would be very careful. Um, but it tilled about 10 inches down. And now with that, I wasn't committed to just tilling and like messing up all the soil life and like planting things in it. So my goal was to build up the soil. So now we can like move into the soil conversation. So I worked with the natural gardener to purchase all of my soil for this garden and the mulch because I really wanted to support a local business. Um, and if you guys are interested in how much this all costs, by the way, like, let me know. I don't want to scare anybody. Um, it wasn't that bad. And actually on that note, I actually used all of my YouTube revenue over the last two years to pay for this garden. So thank you for watching. <laughs> But the soil that I chose, one of the soils that I actually tilled in is called expanded shale and compost. I did a bunch of research on it. It's made by a company out of Texas. So what expanded shale is, is it's actually rock that you that they heat to a really high temperature and it becomes really porous and then it kind of breaks apart. Well, it holds on to water really, really well. So that's one of the things that we need in clay soil is to be able to retain water and not just dry out. So with that expanded shale, I put two bags of each of that into each bed and then I went ahead and tilled that in so that I could amend the soil. Um, this area has been a neighborhood for a really long time and it has a lot of Bermuda and a lot of St. Augustine grass, which is really annoying grass. So that was kind of my motivation to use that expanded shale compost. Um, I also stayed away from any compost that had uh, manure from grazing animals in it because I really did not want to deal with any herbicide issues. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can Google uh, graze on damage or herbicide damage in garden soil and you will find all kinds of things. <laughs> um, and actually it happened to me, I think, when I started my tomato seedlings in some contaminated potting soil. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> After the expanded shale and compost, um, we built the beds, we laid them down, and then we went ahead and did some leaf mold compost. We did the Fox Farm soil conditioner. 
um, and then some Texas native topsoil. So um, Central Texas has a really cool like wood recycling program where they actually make topsoil compost stuff like that. Um, I've used it in vegetable beds before and it's totally fine to use. So I did 50% amendments, 50% topsoil, which really helped the cost of my garden um, because I was building a lot of garden. I mean, we built the one four by 16 and then five four by eight. It's like, that's a, that's a lot of garden to fill with like straight compost. Now you're probably wondering, well, Brooke, did you get bags or did you get bulk compost? I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you, I could not get bulk compost because our driveway is on enough of an incline to where they won't deliver it. So I had to get bags, which is fine. Um, it was a really good workout. I'm feeling very fit and strong. <laughs> Um, but no, we hauled it all from our driveway into the backyard um, because that's what I could do. So um, we did um, the compost, the topsoil, the soil conditioner, and then I did shredded cedar mulch on top. I always finish my beds with shredded cedar mulch um, because it breaks down really, really well and becomes that humus in the dirt. Humus is kind of like the material that bugs will digest. Speaking of bugs, one just flew at me. That bugs will eat and digest and then it becomes part of the soil. So um, that was the soil that I decided to go with. I did decide to go with a little bit more of a high quality soil mix um, just because honestly I could afford it um, and affordability is a big factor when you're building stuff like this if you would have asked me a couple of years ago I would have never been able to afford to build this much at one time maybe one bed um, and like I said if you're interested in how much it cost or if you have any questions at all leave them in the comments and I, I'll make like a answering your questions Q&A video um, so that was the soil. Now I already had all my seedlings growing, so once the soil was dumped, which my girlfriends who came over for my birthday, they oh, were the ones that like, were dumping really all that away. soil, mixing it, getting it wet before they put the mulch on. Like, honestly, they crushed it. And then after they were done doing all of that, my mom was the one with the circle saw building the beds. <laughs> and I was just like standing around, helping my mom, just in amazement that this was all happening. Um, so then I went ahead and had them plant everything. Now, I wanna to explain to you in each bed kind of how I went about thinking about where to plant things because I knew that this backyard had really good sun. Basically, uh, this, this property is one of the only properties with no trees because that was something I was pretty adamant about. Um, so our actual home faces south like the front of it faces south. So that means we get sun from corner to corner, which is great because that's exactly what we need for this garden. Um, that sun was sun exposure was something I really struggled with in my last garden at the rental house. So that's why I really, really wanted this to be here. So in that, I had to really think hard about which beds got the most sun, which got morning sun, which got afternoon sun. So let's go bed by bed and I'll explain to you why I put things where I put them. <laughs> okay, so this long bed is what I'm calling stadium seating. So my tomatillos are in the back. They're gonna get really, really tall. The middle row are all determinate tomatoes. They're all different varieties of determinate tomatoes. So your determinate tomatoes are only gonna grow to be like mm, five to seven feet tall, okay? They're not gonna grow crazy, crazy. My indeterminate tomatoes we'll talk about in a minute, but these are all determinate tomatoes. So they're not gonna get that big and they're gonna be done by mid-June. Just keep that in mind. So these beds right here get the harshest afternoon sun. So that's why I planned my tomatillos and these tomatoes will come out around mid-June, July. And that's when I'll plant my okra and my sweet potatoes. And then in the front here are peppers and they are totally heat loving. So they're gonna do great right here. I did interplant different flowers. We have some marigolds, we have alyssum, we have snapdragons. I just stuck some basil plants in different little corners. Um, and so this bed is gonna be really, really beautiful. I'm excited. My tomatillos are struggling a bit. Um, they got, they just got too big. 
um, that was that was my fault um, I also put just a couple little herbs here's some oregano here's some borage and then these beds I did kind of a similar thought pattern so we have peppers on the ends and then we have our determinate tomatoes in the middle because I wanted to be able to reach my determinate tomatoes from both sides and then we're just kind of interplanted with some like Tulsi holy basil purple basil snapdragons marigolds basically whatever I could just shove into different places and then the other thing that are in these south facing beds are my eggplants so eggplants are extremely heat tolerant they'll do really really well oh and look we already have like a bee and a spider web we're crushing it out here this last bed similar kind of a story um we have peppers and eggplants on the outsides we have determinate tomatoes on the insides and then once these determinate tomatoes are done i'll put okra or something that's really heat loving in its place and that is one of those things that you <laughs> would be really hard to figure out until you actually lived in the house for a little bit and like watched the sun and i don't even know what the sun's going to be like in the fall and winter so that's something else we'll have to figure out so indeterminate tomatoes have an a indetermined height if you have the right conditions they would just keep growing 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 so i have these seven foot t posts and they're probably at least six and a half feet tall with this fencing and what will happen is as my indeterminate tomatoes grow I will a trellis them onto this trellis and it'll be like a big wall of tomatoes. So they are interplanted with marigolds and I should have planted these tomatoes a little closer but it'll be fine. Um, I will probably interplant some flowers in here like some zinnias just to kind of fill in the gaps. This is the bed that I can see from my kitchen window so I'm really really excited to have all of my heirloom tomatoes up here just big and beautiful and green. We're about to get a week of rain, so um, it's gonna do really, really well, really well for these tomatoes. Now here, um, we, similar situation, peppers, determinate tomatoes, and then these I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with yet, so stay tuned on what's gonna be here. I bought T-posts to have two arches, but I was kind of rethinking that decision because I think I really just want this one massive arch. Um, but these are more indeterminate tomatoes right here. I lost a couple that just got nailed by a windstorm, um, but so be it. So on my arch here, this is where I'll be planting my vining plants. So loofahs, some smaller melons, cucumbers, um, those will get planted here and I will actually be planting those today. I tried to start them in advance before we moved, but everything was so chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> I it was just chaos so there was no way that that was gonna happen so the reason I was able to build this garden in 48 hours was a because I had I'm not gonna lie a really good plan of attack um, which I'll explain in a second but the other thing was is I had help I had community I had people who were willing to come spend time doing it and I could have certainly gotten it done um, but they were just willing to jump in and start helping, which was like phenomenal because I have been saying for months that I have an insane plan and it, it, it was insane, <laughs> but we were able to accomplish it. I still don't know how. So basically what we did was this happened over like a three day period. So I had the soil delivered on a Thursday. Friday, me and my mom spent the morning tilling all the sites. So we had already, me and my fiance Cam had already designed it. We put little landscaping flags where everything was gonna go. And we ended up moving stuff around like a decent amount, like more than I thought it was going to. Um, Cause I had this idea in my head. I had even drawn it on paper. We spent Friday morning tilling and the tilling actually took way longer than I thought because I've now learned that the soil here is decently rocky and you can tell it's just pretty nutrient deficient because it's just so like hard and dry and clay and all that good stuff. So Friday, a lot of what we did was tilling. It also rained that morning. So I was actually hauling bags in the rain with my like stainless steel garden cart from the driveway all the way to the backyard. And I was just hauling bags because it's just rain. Like, what are you gonna do? So then once it stopped raining, we were able to really get in there and start tilling. The tilling probably took us a good three or four hours. We did run on a gas, so we gotta go get more gas.
But the tilling really was the hardest part. Truly the tilling was the hardest part. And then at the on the end of the day on Friday, we went and got all the lumber. We didn't actually do anything with it. We just moved it in the backyard, called it a day. Um, so that was Friday. Saturday was really when everything moved very quickly. My friends got here in the morning and we had already laid the bags in front of each space that we had tilled so that they were just there. I didn't have to explain like these two bags, these one bag, this three bags because there were just a lot of bags. So I kind of arranged it so that that part went really quickly and I didn't have to really give people much direction. And then um, really me and my mom just started cutting wood and putting together the beds. and my friends would come in after us as we were building the beds and start dumping the dirt, mixing it, wetting it down, mulching. And once that started happening, it actually went really fast. I think everybody got here around like nine or 10 a.m. We were done, done. Plants in the ground by two. And once they got all the beds filled, mulched, whatever, um, they were kind of like, okay, Brooke, where do you want your plants? I did not think they were actually gonna be able to plant the plants. Um, and there were about, there was my mom and then four ladies and myself. So it was six of us um, really getting after it. And I will say that made the biggest difference. I certainly could have gotten it all done myself, but it would have taken days. Like it would have taken probably an extra couple of days at least if I was like really kind of moving fast so really having that community was absolutely essential um and that was how it happened in 48 hours to be really honest with you so i i maybe maybe it's clickbait maybe it's just me honoring my friends who decided to come help but i'll uh, i'll let you decide that now what i would like to do is actually walk you around and talk to you about our future plans because i've been feeling a little weird about like sharing this backyard garden transformation because there's still so much more that we want to do um, for it to kind of be this like place that I'm like dreaming and envisioning but all of that takes time like you know Rome was not built in a day kind of a thing so everybody's just including myself has to be patient so let me walk you around and show you all the things that we want to do to this backyard situation to kind of again make it the backyard of our dream first things first we obviously want to get our trees planted um my my lime tree is like crushing it um they're very happy about all the new light they're getting but they desperately need to get into the ground and clearly they're like toppling over um but these trees bushes really need to be trimmed um you can tell they did a decent amount of trimming to keep them away from the house but actually these two trees are coming out completely and i'm going to extend the front bed and make it like a native bed these two we're gonna let live we like them they just like desperately need to be trimmed and then that'll give way more sun to these fig trees so these are all figs these are plums i put the citrus right here all kind of in the same place so that i can cover them in the winter you can definitely grow citrus here in texas um you just have to be ooh, you just have to be prepared to cover it when we're having like a really hard freeze um so then we have our peach trees um this is my sam houston peach it's already got peaches on it so i don't know if it's gonna lose the fruit once i plant it in the ground just from stress but we will see um this is my tropic beauty peach i did get this one in the ground and this one is a rooted cutting um, from my old community garden. I know that my trees are a little close together. That's because I plan on keeping them pretty pruned. I don't plan on letting them like just go wild. I plan on keeping them fairly small um, because we are in a backyard. I'm not in an orchard. I'm not using this for like commercial production. If you wanna learn more about this, I actually really love the way that Kevin from Epic Gardening does his and then Kyle Haggerty from Urban Farmstead does his as well. He keeps them pretty trim, pretty like tight. 
Um, and it's just enough for two people. I'll put it this way. I grow gardens to feed myself vegetables and I really focus on production. I grow fruit for funsies. Like I am not trying to like make enough jam and freeze enough fruit out of this little orchard to like survive off of. <laughs> Weird little half wall. This. It's coming down. I don't like it. I haven't liked it since we bought the house, but again, it's fine. You got to see the potential. I'm pretty sure the old owners had a hot tub right here, um, which is why they built the half wall, which is fine, so that other second story houses could see them in the hot tub. Do your best. Um, this rock situation, so large. Um, and uh, it's, it's honestly, it's riddled with ants down like in underneath the weed fabric and I'm trying to figure out how to get somebody to come take it away. <laughs> and honestly and truly, as much as I would love to just do it myself, and let's be honest, I would, um, it's a lot of rock and the metal edging, I can't figure out how to get out. It is like solid steel and I seriously can't figure out how to get it out. But we don't really love the rock. Um, it's also not smooth rock. It's really sharp on your feet and it, it gets hot when it's hot outside because it's so dark. So the rock's probably gonna go, but that's definitely a long-term project because um, I would like to have more grass back here too. Um, and I just don't like, the dogs don't like walking on it. We don't like walking on it. Not that I'm coming out here barefoot very often, but like, you know, then I think about if, if I have kids over here, they're gonna face plant into some sharp rocks. Like, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. So long-term, um, we want to just get rid of the half wall, get rid of the rock, and then if I were to get all of my like insane lady hopes and dreams, we really want to do a rainwater collection system right here and we want to install gutters. Um, and then I would use the rainwater to water the trees in the orchard during drought. Um, and then I left this whole area back here completely bare because there has been talk around the garden stead about getting little chickies. Why don't you try to feel about it? So rain barrel, so rainwater collecting system, potentially chickens. Um, the other thing is we want solar panels. Um, and these are all like very long term projects. <laughs> Um, I'm really hoping we can get the rock and that half wall taken care of within, if not this year, at least by next year, um, and then kind of go from there. I'm trying to toy around with the idea of if I want to raise the beds another six inches and have them be a foot tall, um, but I think I'm going to have to really live with them for a few seasons before I make that call. So once we get rid of this half wall, I actually want to do a little raised metal bed um, and then that bed. Um, one with just straight up herbs and then I want to do just a blueberry bed. So just a bed with blueberries in that tall bed so that I can control the soil pH. Um, and then speaking of berries, the other long term project. This isn't necessarily long term, this is something I just haven't been able to get to yet, but it is a blackberry hedge along the fence. So I really want to do blackberries, I have all the plants, um, but digging holes in this soil is so difficult, it's so hard. So um, I just really have to kind of wait my turn, wait for it to rain, let that clay loosen up a little bit, and then digging holes to do all these things will be much, much easier. So that was kind of a little bit of a chaotic tour of the new space. Um, and that's just kind of a quick explanation of how we built this garden so fast. Um, but I'm extremely happy I did sit out here in my garden tea set and drink my coffee the other morning and it was so delightful. I can't wait to do that more. Um, so, I don't know what my next video is gonna be about. <laughs> TBD. We're about to have a lot of rain and like I've been very out of the content creation game for a couple of months. So thanks so much for sticking with me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Again, my monetization from this YouTube channel, which is not that much by the way, over two years I was able to literally build 
my dream garden. So thank you for watching. Keep watching, please. If you're new here, please subscribe. We have a lot of fun here. And also I have this big, beautiful new kitchen that I can't wait to show you. And I can't wait to start cooking what we harvest out of the garden with you in that kitchen. So I'm gonna stop rambling. Thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening. And we'll see you next time.